So last week we spoke about some of the mistakes that I made when living in Italy, but I've been abroad 15 going on 16 years now. And it's not just Italy that I've lived in, there have been other countries along the way, but regardless of the countries, I think there have been some lessons that I've learned along the way that can apply to just about any country. But in this episode, I want to talk about some mistakes that I've made as an expat. Roll that intro. Hello there, I'm Rafael Di Furio. Welcome back to another episode of Not Your Average Globetrotter. And let's just jump straight into it. One of the first mistakes that I made straight off the boat as a young kid, ready to see the world wide-eyed and ready for everything, <laughs> that I also see a lot of other expats make a mistake, at least mentality-wise, is thinking that English inherently is going to be a selling point for a job for someone that wants to maybe hire you. What I'll say is that English can be a good thing. However, English is one of the most commonly spoken languages. And so even if you do speak English, yes, that can be a very good thing. And there can be places where maybe just because you speak English, you can get by and you can get a job. And even though I've had some of those experiences myself, those are going to be extremely rare. But regardless of where you're going to live, almost always you will at least need some level of the local language. It is extremely rare that you can ever find a job while living abroad that doesn't require the local language to some extent. But if you're living in another country, like I've said in so many episodes, we've started about the language so many times. Learn the language. It's worthwhile, even just for your day-to-day -day life, just for social activities, for even getting things done, going to the supermarket, being able to read the label on this, the, the can of whatever it is that you're thinking about buying. Like I said, I have had experiences where I was able to get a job just solely for the fact that I spoke a language, but I got a job in a very touristy place or because the company was American. But if you are working remotely, this is another reason why I so often talk about if you can work remotely and make that work for you, then okay, you might be able to speak in your own language without having to worry about a secondary one. Or maybe if you speak multiple languages, that can maybe make things that much more attractive on your resume, your CV, for the instance when you might want to get a job. So having an extra language definitely doesn't hurt at all. One of the other mistakes that I see expats making is putting all of their eggs in one basket or not putting enough eggs into a singular basket. I see a lot of expats going to one country and thinking, oh my gosh, this is going to be amazing. It's going to be wonderful. This is the perfect country. People think like us. They want to be like us. They know about how things work and they are civilized people who know how to live on this planet like we want to live. But then they get there and then they see maybe people are just people at the end of the day and their bubble bursts and they see maybe the place that they were thinking that they were going to might not necessarily be what they were looking for or what they hoped might exist. So like I've mentioned before in previous episodes, this can be not only frustrating, but it can really break the whole experience of living abroad. Uh, there are people that put huge amounts of money tied up into a move to another country. There are people who put themselves through so many headaches and nightmares to make sure that they can even legally get to a place that when you finally get there, and maybe, just maybe, it doesn't work out because your perceptions didn't match the reality, that can be a big problem. But at the same time, I would also say there's the flip side of that same coin where people will move to another country but not spend time there or not spend enough time there, that they go there and they move there only as a jump off point to be able to go and travel around. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, and that is something that you could call a benefit of living abroad is, especially in Europe, uh, being able to travel around Europe from any European country to another European country quite easily, this is definitely a huge bonus. However, I do see many people moving to Portugal, to Italy, or to other places where they will just remain there, but not be there, if you get what I mean, not invest themselves into the place, not learn the language. Maybe there's an assumption from a governmental body that a, some, a person who's wanting to get a visa to be in a country is going to make at least some effort of some sort. But there are many expats who go to various different countries, but don't really participate in the local culture, the local scene. And yes, I'm using the word expat interchangeably, even with the word immigrant here. If you want to know about my perspective on why I use expat and, and immigrant 
immigrant interchangeably, be sure to check out the episode that I did on expat versus immigrant. I realize many people see them as very different things, but if you're putting a limit on the words, I think there's a problem in and of itself there rather than using the word expat. So because expat is just so easy to say, I'm going to be continuing to use that word. But like I spoke about also last week, another issue that I can see that came about because I didn't put myself into situations where maybe I should have spent more time around expats is that not living in areas with these communities just in general. It wasn't just in Italy where I did this, but I had lived in places with very significant expat communities and I've lived in places with none. Better to have some than none, in my opinion. It's different. It's can, it can make a situation difficult not being able to reach out to someone who maybe understands what it is you're needing. Because say you're living in a country and the people there they've lived their whole their whole lives they're citizens of the nations uh, of course they're not going to need certain things that you might need to worry about they're not going to have to worry about what visa nor are they maybe even going to understand what visas are available because they've never had to deal with a visa for their own country before so i mean for me even for example i know a bit about certain visas in certain different countries but if you ask me about visas for the united states then that's going to be something where i may have a gap in my knowledge base because i lived in italy for a while yes i have some knowledge about some of the visas there and same here with Portugal and a couple other countries but that's more because they have either played a practical role in my life or I had much more exposure to them but in the states for example in the place where I had grown up that was my reality it was not needing to worry about those things so if you are going to another country maybe they're even on a social level not even just like say a uh, practical level like being able to find out information but being able to relate on certain topics. I know, for example, here in Portugal, where I live now, there are many people very frustrated with the uh, the, the agency that deals with visas and residency here, uh, with delays and being able to get appointments or even being able to renew their residency. That I know is something for expats across the board can be extremely frustrating to deal with and how to navigate through that when maybe an individual from this country might probably never have to deal with that. But somebody else who's from maybe that person's same country, there are a lot of Americans here, a lot of people from other places that may have had to deal with those things, maybe they're going to have a little bit of insight on what to do, how to do, what's normal, what's not normal. And to be able to have that shared experience and be able to trade back information back and forth, I mean, hey, there is something extremely, extremely valuable to that. But before we get into the next point, just a quick little thing. If you agree with any of my points or if you disagree with any of my points, always feel free to let me know down in the comment section below. I'm not saying I'm right about everything, but these are some perspectives and opinions on what I've seen over the years, not just from my own experience, but observing others and speaking to others over the years. I'm the type of person that really enjoys learning from the world around me, and these are some of the perceptions that I've had. Not all of them I'm going to say are going to be what you'll experience everywhere or that you will experience them. But moving on to the next point. This next point, though, is kind of related to what I was talking about a little bit before when I was saying about maybe expats putting too many eggs into one basket or not putting enough into a basket. And I wish in some ways that I had maybe set down roots in a singular country at a younger age. And I can see now for me in my 30s that yes, there would have been a benefit to investing myself into a singular location where I could build up certain aspects of my life a little bit more easily because there are certain things that maybe I would like to do in a professional sense, but I still need to work on those things. But I know if I hadn't restarted my life a number of times that that point of my career would have already come sooner. So that aspect was delayed because of the work that I do sometimes my location, at least in the past, was tied partially to the location. Now at this point, with being able to work remotely, there are certain aspects of my career that I can keep that progress regardless of where I go. I, I've, like I said last week, I, roughly speaking, work in marketing and video production, audio production. We don't need to go into everything, uh, but that's the simple version of it because I end up doing a lot more than that. But really what it comes down to is that in some ways, yes, there are certain countries that actually I do wish I had gone and lived in and spent time there. But there are other countries that I've been keeping my eyes open to over the years that I'm really glad that I ended up not going because of various factors, whether it be political or ecological or 
taxation like uh, the, the 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 landscape is always shifting and uh, whether you should go to a place or not go to a place could you could make a choice a good choice in the moment but in the future that same choice might not be the best option for you and maybe in fact moving to another country would be the best case but Sometimes there are going to be certain situations where writing things out could prove worthwhile for you. But I really have to say when it comes down to it, there was a point when I had really thought about doing the digital nomad thing, and it still does come across my mind from time to time that maybe even if I don't do it like a regular thing, like living the whole year, going from place to place to place to place, but being able to have flexibility to go from one location to another location, maybe spend a week or a couple days in a location, that even alone becomes so much more less attractive to me as time has gone on. I've come to really appreciate being able to fall asleep in the same room, in the same place, and knowing that in the middle of the night, I can reach over and find a water bottle, or I can find the light switch, or not have even having to open my eyes in complete darkness. By touch alone, I know where things are. I can stumble into the kitchen, or whatever it may be, or even having my desk set up just the way that I like it. Maybe not just exactly the way it needs to be, but could be organized a little bit better, but that's always a case of, <laughs> I think, for most people. But you get what I'm saying? Having your space your way can make a big difference as well in your daily life, firstly, but then also for somebody who does work from home, your productivity as well, at least for me, this is how it works. It might not work like this for everybody, but having that ability to just know what, where everything is and how everything is set up, that makes a huge difference in my productivity levels and being able to reach for something, knowing that one thing is in one draw here or another draw over there or another draw behind me or on the other side of the room. It's something also to do with as well comfort, not just productivity, being able to have your space and make your mark on it is something that you can't do if you're traveling from place to place to place to place, from Bali to Berlin. Yeah, okay, there's a lot of fun that you can have and a lot of enjoyable things that you can do, but I personally do believe that it is really worthwhile setting down roots and enjoying the place where you are, but also taking the time to go and Maybe travel to some of the places that you would like to see, because maybe you don't have to spend five months in a certain location. Maybe you don't have to. Even though I would say, if you are thinking about really spending your time in a place, a few weeks, you really don't even really scratch the surface of getting to know what the place is like. So yes, if you are wanting to move abroad, move abroad. But at the same time, I think there's a balance. So even though I'm talking about two different things at the same time, I think, again, it's balancing investing yourself versus not not investing yourself and finding where that kind of equilibrium point is investing yourself into the place where you are but being able to have freedom i mean freedom is it's a very undervalued asset another mistake that i've seen a lot of people make including myself is not finding the right community for themselves for some people that could be a religious thing for some people it could be social for some people it could be one thing it could be another thing it can come in many different forms but i know for some people uh, including myself to an extent i wouldn't say again that i'm a religious person but i wouldn't say that i don't believe in anything at all uh, what i would say is that there are times that maybe i've thought about it might be nice to be able to connect with other people that are a part of the community of the religion that I had grown up with and uh, have those shared uh, cultural kind of little tidbits with and that I maybe haven't connected with those things over the years in some ways or some aspects that maybe, yeah, you know, I do see a value there, especially uh, again, like this goes back to the interview that I did with Josh and Kaylee, and it had been something that I'd thought about before, uh, but they mentioned that for them, living in Porto and having their church and their community around them has been really nice for them to be able to have that place of worship. I'm not saying that that's something that I'm necessarily looking for, but I see the value in it. And I can see in my own life, yeah, maybe. Maybe there would be something that would be worthwhile uh, being able to have that type of connection to a community. But again, I'm not saying this needs to be a religious thing. 
and I'm not saying it has to be a non-religious thing either, finding the people who you have something in common with regardless. I mean, if you're a gamer, if you're a board gamer, find other people who enjoy board games. If you uh, like to go out and running, if you like to go out and biking, for some people, those types of exercises can be almost a religious experience, going to the gym, whatever it may be. There are various types of activities that you can participate in which can help you to be able to feel as though you're not just a lonely island out in the, the middle of the ocean. Maybe you're on a lonely island in the middle of the ocean, but even there, you'll be able to find something. Hopefully. I would really hope for that if you are far out in the middle of nowhere. But hey, maybe you don't want that. There are plenty of people who just want to get out into the middle of nowhere for the sake of being out in the middle of nowhere. This last point, I think, is going to be relevant to individuals who are really freshly off the boat, so to speak. And that is being very careful who you spend your time with and the friendships that you build. And if you're moving abroad as a single person, the relationships that you may or may not build romantically. But even in friendship, I would say it's very worthwhile to be careful, especially in your first kind of little while. I've seen over the years that I've been abroad, there's a tendency that many individuals will naturally gravitate. And I've done this before as well. Like I'm not looking down on anybody who's done this, but I'm saying it's something to be aware of that can happen, that I've seen happen a lot. Almost every expat that I've known has gone through this at some point, that when you first move abroad and some of the first people that you meet, you might gravitate towards them because, oh my gosh, you, you, you're, you're like me. You're from this place. We're, we're the same. But then you see that the, the, the friendship there maybe wasn't necessarily what each person had thought it was, or that maybe one person had set certain expectations over the other person, or that they want certain people expected more out of you. I mean, I've had this before where maybe people expected more out of me than what I was saying that I could offer as a friend. But this is also part of being a human and growing up and the experience of the world that we live in is that you will make friends and that friendships will come and go, but also relationships as well. One really big issue I've had, and I haven't had it so much in the more recent years, but it still has existed. But more so in the earlier days of Not Your Average Globetrotter, I used to talk a bit more about passport hunters. And this has come for me in different forms, whether it was through friendships or even romantic interests. Unfortunately, there is a, a thought, a perception of Americans, which is not always true, that Americans are loaded. Filthy rich just have all the money in the world and will spend all the money in the world. Especially as a young expat, a young immigrant abroad, that wasn't my case. And unfortunately, there were individuals who were kind of in my life at certain points that they saw, oh, he's American. Oh, he'll, he'll just pay for us. He'll do these things. And I was like, that wasn't the case. And once they saw that wasn't the case, then they just drop things like a sack of hot potatoes. But being able to recognize when those things come about, I think is very important because some people won't show those things very early on. But even in romantic relationships, I've said plenty of times before uh, on Not Your Average Globetrotter that this has been a major issue for me, that I'm not saying all women are like this, but unfortunately, a lot of the women that I've met over the years with any type of romantic something uh, overtone to the interaction there was an interest in my passports more than there was in me and fine like i'm not saying it was a good thing i'll definitely say it's a bad thing don't get me wrong there it was not easy especially the first time that i maybe noticed it but then at a certain point unfortunately i kept my eye out for it and since then i've made it very clear early on that i'm living abroad i'm living abroad full time i have no interest to return and i'm not bringing anybody with me to the us i'm living my life here where i am uh, there's no bad feelings towards the country i'm from i just am ready for what else there is out there in this world, location-wise. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I'm not looking to have a million relationships. I'm not looking to explore in that regard. But what I'm saying is that for me, I just, I think there's so much more out in the world, but there have been instances that you saw, I saw the energy, just the facial just everything changed in that moment. It, it went from, wow, we're having such a great time to, oh, hmm. Yeah, oh, gee, ah, oh, wow. Well, look at the time. Mm, I guess I have to go now.
Yeah. And so, again, coupled with that perception, that unfortunate perception of Americans, unfortunately, there will be certain individuals who may see this over time. But please don't make a mistake with what I'm saying here. I'm not saying that everybody outside the U.S. just wants American money and they're trying to get your job and all that stuff. All I'm saying is that Unfortunately, this is something that can exist in this world and that it is worthwhile to be very careful of it, especially if you are single and you are looking for forever. If you're not looking for forever and you're just looking for a bit of fun, I'm not that type of person, but hey, if that's the type of fun you want to have, then be careful. Anyway, I'm Rafael Di Furia. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Not Your Average Globe Trotter. Especially thanks to those of you who helped to make these episodes possible on a monthly basis through patreon.com slash Rafael Di Furia or the one-time donations through here on YouTube through the thanks button as well as rafaeldifuria.com slash support. Of course, I'm Rafael Di Furia. Stay safe and healthy out there and I will see you all next time for another episode of Not Your Average Globe Trotter. Later. Mm-hmm.